Today's video, we're going to be going over one of my favorite sets of all time, the legendary 1933 Gaudi Gum set. Hey, welcome back to another Breakout Sports video. I'm Ryan, and today I'm going to be going over the 1933 Gaudi set. Now, the Gaudi set in 33 is one of the three most important sets in baseball history with the other two being the 1909 to 1911 T206 tobacco card set, and the other being the 1952 top set. And what really makes Gaudi important in the hobby was it's the biggest set in a long time. It's 240 cards, and then the fact that they also include gum in the packs themselves. Now, gum is really important because gums were packaged uh, with baseball cards all the way up until the 90s. Tops always used to do that. And before uh, Gaudi put gum with the cards, it used to be tobacco. And tobacco was kind of marketed towards kids in a sense because kids wanted the baseball cards. And Gaudi was the first company to actually have chewing gum instead of tobacco, which is a lot healthier, obviously, than having the tobacco. But what made Gaudi really, really important over time also is it's kind of a legendary set with some of its Easter eggs. Uh, they only printed out 239 of the 240 cards back in 1933. They had multiple waves of printing the cards and they weren't sequential. So it makes the set really, really confusing to a person back in 1933 um, with one card not even being there and then the cards being printed out of order in different series is being released. Um, what makes it awesome as well is 25% of the set is full of Hall of Famers. Think about that. One out of four cards is a Hall of Famer. And in that set itself, uh, there's a lot of legends in there like Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig. So let's talk about some of the main cards that you want to get in this set. So the first one I do want to talk about is Babe Ruth. Now, Babe Ruth has four distinctive cards in the set. One of those cards, though, is printed twice. So there's a double print with him on the field itself. So you, you can normally see the Babe Ruth card uh, with the plain background. It's either red or yellow, but one of his cards has him in a back of a baseball field. And this card was printed out actually twice and which caused uh, one card not to be printed at all, the Nap La Hoy. And I'll be talking that, about that a little bit later. So this card was double printed and uh, you can tell the difference on the two different prints. One's slightly out of focus compared to the other. There's not really a value difference between the two, um, but there's a double print run on those compared to the other two Ruth cards. So it's kind of the main staple in the set. So two of them have the big league um, chew pretty much at the very bottom of the red banner. And then the one does not. Now, Another card that's really, really focused in the set is the Lou Gehrig. Lou Gehrig also has two cards in the set. And what's interesting is Lou Gehrig is going to be the staple in Gaudi in 1934. I'll be talking about that in a future video. But just know he has two cards also in the 1933 set. So the set is absolutely full of Hall of Famers. And some of them I just name on top of my head. You have Roger Hornsby. You have Mel Ott. You have Dizzy Dean. You have Dazzy Vance. Lefty Grove. Lefty Gomez among so many other players. Again, 25% of the set was full of Hall of Famers. So if you're a Hall of Fame set or Hall of Famer card collector like I am, this set is kind of like a dream set for you since there's so many to collect with that. Now, the one card that escaped production back in 1933 was the Nap La Hoy. This was the missing 240 card. And as I was talking about earlier with Babe Ruth being printed twice, uh, Ruth's plate replaced where the Nap La Hoy should have been. And Gaudi, to correct that, what they ended up doing is milling out the cards of Nap La Hoy to anyone who complained about their missing it, number 240. So this Nap La Hoy card had a front of a 1934 Gaudi and then the back of a 1933 Gaudi. So it was a mixture of the two years, which is really, really interesting. And it was actually printed in circulation with all the 1934 Gaudis. There's a printing sheet uh, posted online and you can see the Nap La Hoy printed with it. Um, what's interesting is the Nap La Hoy is very, very low pop. I believe that there's less than 100 of these out there. But if you look at the pop reports of the 34 Gaudis, uh, they're really, really high. So uh, a lot of these leftover Nap La Hoys were probably thrown away or just given away and just were never saved over time. A lot of them, though, also were kept by collectors and are in very, very high uh, grade. And these cards fetch a lot of money. I'm talking about five to six figures now in 2021. I don't know where the card is going to go at in the future. I suspect it's going to go really high since it's kind of an iconic card. Um, but yeah. And what really makes Nap La Hoy also interesting is he was a retired player at this point. So Nap La Hoy was no longer playing in the big leagues. He was retired. 
and Gaudi still put him in the set. So kind of interesting with that. So to recap this video, the 1933 Gaudi set is iconic for a lot of collectors. It's one of the big three sets of baseball. Uh, they were the first company to have chewing gum instead of tobacco and marketed it towards kids. Uh, that way, the kids were no longer smoking tobacco and said chewed gum, which helped continue uh, producing baseball cards over and over again. The set was 240 cards, and because of that, 25% uh, of them were Hall of Famers. A ton of big rookie cards were in the set. So a lot of collectors absolutely love the 33 Gaudis. And just one little bit tidbit of information that's really cool. 34 Gaudis were actually meant to be an extension of the 33 Gaudis. They weren't supposed to be a completely separate set. Um, but I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in the 34 Gaudi video, which is going to be uploaded this week. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Let me know if you like uh, the breakdowns of the sets. I'm going to be keep on doing them year after year for these other companies. I'll do some tops, do some Bowman, and maybe some Leaf. And I'll catch you guys in another video.